This video is brought to you by Zavi. Simply follow the link on screen or click the link in the description of this video to head over to the Zavi website and redeem our awesome discount codes to get money off of your favourite Doctor Who TV movie and gaming merchandise. Follow the link and use the Whoaddicts 20 for 20% off all clothing merch or use the Whoaddicts 10 for 10% off anything and everything on the Zavi website. Enjoy the video. You've seen it, that old planet. The second sun would rise in the south and the mountains would shine. The leaves on the trees were silver. When they caught the light every morning, it looked like a forest on fire. Gallifrey, the home of the Time Lords. The jewel, the shining world of the Seven Systems, sat within the constellation of Kasturbarus, a world with billions of years of storied history, home to the most powerful species in the entire universe. From the dark times at the very dawn of time itself, all the way through to the last great time war, Gallifrey has seen it all. It's housed some of the greatest minds civilization has ever seen, from the ancient Gallifreyans through to the likes of Rassilon, Romana, Omega, the Other, the Doctor, and many more. Today we are going to chronicle as much of Gallifrey's past as we can. Its wars, its invasions, its presidents. Today we document the story of Gallifrey. Gallifrey was one of the first planets in the sky, some claim the very first. In the very beginning, ancient Gallifreyans evolved to be one of the first humanoid species in the universe when it was all still without structure and in relative chaos. During the dark times, there were still no laws of physics and only infinite possibilities. Albeit human, the first Gallifreyans were known as the Shadow People, caught between the warm darkness of magic and the cold light of science. During the time of empires, Gallifreyan colonies continued to grow, with religion, culture and rule. New cultures began to evolve and gain an understanding of the universe, as the universe itself began to take shape. Gallifreyan society grew and eventually led into the rise of the Time Lords. In the old time, three Gallifreyans, known as the Three Founding Fathers, founded the Time Lord Society. They were made up of Rassilon, an engineer and architect of the planet, Omega, an intergalactic engineer and genius, and the Other, a third member who we now believe to be Tektayun, an explorer from outer space who brought the ability of regeneration to the planet. This was of course following the discovery of the Timeless Child, a lonely child found beneath an unknown portal with the ability to change every cell within its body whenever it faced death. This child of course we believe at this moment to be the Doctor. The swift development of the Time Lord race was accelerated further when the three founding fathers achieved the ability of time travel, thanks to Omega's genius and the hand of Omega. He used the hand to detonate a star, creating a black hole. They suspended time around this exploding star, harnessing its potential energy from the collapse, which would of course never quite occur. This was known as the Eye of Harmony. 
The three took Gallifrey from its primitive beginnings to an early powerhouse within the still youthful universe. Unfortunately for Omega, his genius is what resulted in his demise. With the universe still so young, the technology and knowledge which the Time Lords possessed quickly spread throughout the universe, allowing other primitive species to hear of it. And it's believed that an assassin named Fenris was sent by the Order of the Black Sun, another earlier inhabitant in the galaxy. He was sent to sabotage Omega's ship, and he did this by taking down the shielding, pulling Omega into the very black hole that he created. This was how we believe Omega was sent into the Anti-Matter Universe, where he would stay for an eternity. On Gallifrey, Omega was presumed dead. However, rumours were spread that his death was in fact arranged by Rassilon himself. It was unknown to what had become of the other, but Rassilon began to recruit from the outer regions of Gallifrey and beyond the capital, as he wanted to begin developing the very first Type 1 TARDISes. The Time Lords implemented the power of time travel into these TARDISes, bringing the dawn of the very first time machines. With the established Time Lord Society now in place, the era of Rassilon had begun. Rassilon firstly retrieved the Eye of Harmony and stored it within the vaults beneath the capital. He then set up the Matrix, a micro-universe used by the High Council to stall all knowledge of time and space. Twenty years on from the loss of Omega, the Time Lords pulled Fenris, Omega's assassin, from the Time Vortex. This was so they could interrogate him regarding Omega's death. They discovered Fenris was sent by the Order of the Black Sun, but before the Time Lords could extract any more information from him, he was teleported away by the Order. The Order then killed Fenris so they could silence him forever, so the truth of Omega's death could never be uncovered. Following the creation of the Type 1 TARDISes, this allowed the Time Lords to step out from the Twin Suns and head off into the universe. They interacted with a number of other species, unfortunately not peacefully. The Time Lords allied themselves with the fledgling empires and fought the Rachnos in the Rachnos Wars, wiping out their species, bar of course the odd survivor. Rassilon sent one of his greatest engineers, Artron, who was the mind behind the discovery of Artron energy, to the planet of Colston, with the task of experimenting on their people to see if their knowledge of temporal energy could enhance regeneration. Unfortunately, Artron transferred these temporal powers into himself, starving the Colistani of what they needed to survive. This caused them to evolve into the race known as the Ravenous. The Ravenous became attracted to the Time Lords and fed off of their regeneration energy. So Rassilon sent a fleet of ships to destroy the planet, leading to the near genocide of the Ravenous race. Only one clan survived the assault and were imprisoned in a pocket dimension. It is believed that the Ravenous were responsible for the eventual death of the Master before he was resurrected for the last Great Time War. As for Rassilon's close associate, Artron, his disappearance remained a mystery. The Time Lords continued to clash with some of the earlier life forms in the galaxy. They fought a war against the Vondrax before a conflict with the Nestines. The Time Lords contained the Nestines within the Ilia galaxy and then used the Moment to destroy them. The Moment was created by one of Omega's old adversaries named Repon, and was known to be the last work of the Ancients of Gallifrey. It was because of these conflicts that Rassilon introduced the Non-Interference Policy, a policy which would use its power to suppress the weak of the universe. 
This policy would not include violence, and it would allow the Time Lords to still involve themselves in the affairs of the wider universe, giving them almost godlike status. It was a way of maintaining their rule without them needing to fight. This was followed by what was known as the Eons of Stability, where conflicts within the universe began to quieten, and the Time Lords comfortably began to establish themselves as the leaders of the universe. It is believed that within this peaceful era, Rassilon's initial presidency came to an end. He'd exceeded his 12 regenerations, despite a slight attempt to extend his life and power. He accepted death, remaining conscious within the Matrix, preparing a tomb within the Death Zone to test those who sought the gift of immortality. There were rumours that Rassilon was in fact revolted and overthrown by the Time Lords, following his refusal to die and accept his limit of only 12 regenerations. But that was never confirmed, with conflicting theories suggesting that Rassilon was in fact revered by his people, and for all that he'd achieved on Gallifrey. Some even worshipped him as a god. Following his death, this of course meant that the top seat on Gallifrey was available, and with an opportunity of this power and magnitude up for grabs, it was of course always going to create friction. Enter the notorious renegade Time Lord, known as Morbius, who quickly rose to power within the High Council. Morbius didn't believe in the non-interference policy, and wanted it to be abandoned. He wanted Gallifrey to initiate dominance over the lesser species by force, and he did this by recruiting a group of mercenaries to help him, promising them time travel and immortality. However, he was shortly exiled from Gallifrey along with his army by the Time Lords, which led to Morbius causing havoc on the outer universe. The High Council created an alliance and sent them to fight Morbius and his army, which resulted in a war and the loss of multiple planets which were caught up in the crossfire. Morbius and his forces were eventually defeated on Khan, where he was captured, placed on trial, and later executed. Despite his death, Morbius lived on, both physically and religiously. His brain was recovered prior to his disintegration, with his beliefs living on within his followers on Gallifrey, who created the cult of Morbius. They continued to push and fight for what Morbius stood for. By this point, the Doctor and the Master and the Time Lord Society had continued in relative peace. It was in this time that the Doctor and the Master joined the Academy, grew up together, and their friendship developed, as it obviously eventually grew more fractious, before the Doctor left Gallifrey and the Master followed. You can find out more about each of their upbringings in my previous episode, The Story of the Master. All was great on Gallifrey until a constitutional crisis described as the most dangerous in Gallifrey's long history. During the President's resignation, he was assassinated by Chancellor Goth, so his successor was never named. Goth was of course in league with the Master, who tried to frame the Fourth Doctor for his murder and take the Presidency without contest. The Doctor ran for presidency regardless, and succeeded, unravelling the Master's plan. Because of this, the Master killed Goth and acquired the Eye of Harmony after stealing the Sash of Rassilon from the President's corpse. He tried to open the Eye, causing an earthquake on the planet. This caused most of the capital to be destroyed, with the Master just about escaping. Because of Goth's death, this left the Doctor as the only remaining candidate, and therefore the new president of Gallifrey. But the Doctor never wanted this, he only ran to discover the Master's plans. So he decided to flee Gallifrey once again in his TARDIS. Later, the fourth Doctor did return to Gallifrey, finding it without a president and now being led by its Lord Chancellor, Barusa. The Doctor claimed his presidency back as part of a plot to defeat a Varden invasion. 
He allowed them to materialize on Gallifrey so their home planet could be found and placed in a time loop. But this was all a front. They were tricked into an invasion on Gallifrey by the Santarans. And although the Time Lords fought them off, this trick exposed a number of crucial weaknesses of the planet, leading to many further infringements. The Dominators later invaded Gallifrey, but were defeated by the Fifth Doctor, as did the Killer Cats of Ging Seng before being stopped by the Fourth Doctor. Gallifrey was suddenly seen as fragile and breakable without true leadership, and it was about to be reunited with an old friend. A friend from all the way back in the very beginning. Following Barusa's official induction as the Lord President of Gallifrey, his first task was a pretty big one, and that was to fend off the attempted return of one of its founding fathers, Omega. Omega tried to manifest himself back into the normal universe with bad intentions, via the use of the Ark of Infinity. Omega was using the Fifth Doctor's bio data to manifest back into the universe. So, Barusa opted to order the death of the Doctor himself to stop this from happening. Luckily, the Doctor's life was saved, allowing him to deal with Omega himself, assuring that he stayed within the antimatter universe. Barusa's presidency continued to be a tough one, as devout followers of Rassilon demanded to replace Barusa with a descendant of Rassilon himself. It was because of this that Barusa turned to the legacy of Rassilon specifically, and his aim was to kind of become what Rassilon was, and seek immortality. Barusa decided that the only way he would remain president on Gallifrey, and I guess live up to the god that was Rassilon, was to become the president, Eternal, giving him the ability to live forever. He used a time scoop to trap the four of the first five Doctor's incarnations into the Death Zone, so he could use them to access the tomb of Rassilon. But, of course, as set up by Rassilon prior to his death, this was a trap. Barusa did indeed gain the immortality that he craved, but this was in the form of a statue, forever to be trapped within Rassilon's tomb. The High Council once again turned to the Doctor, making him president once more, although he left Chancellor Flavia with his full deputy powers until he returned. This didn't last long, however, with the Doctor finally giving up his presidency to Castellan Lowry, a time lady he briefly befriended on his return to office on Gallifrey. Years later, he returned again, but this time was on trial. The High Council made a deal with the Valiard to prosecute the Doctor, and in return give him all of the Doctor's remaining regenerations. Following the Master's intervention, the Valiard's true identity was revealed, as he fled into the Matrix before being stopped by the Doctor. But the Master's revelations caused a revolution on Gallifrey, descending it into chaos. Because of this, the Eighth Doctor made a deal with Rassilon for Barusa's temporary release from the Death Zone. This was so Barusa could oversee the current situation. Chancellor Flavia eventually won the following election, becoming the next official president of Gallifrey, with Barusa being returned to Rassilon. Flavia was then succeeded and overthrown by Romana, who became the next president of Gallifrey, during the time in which tensions between the Daleks and the Time Lords increased. In order to keep the peace with the Daleks, they created a peace treaty known as the Act of Master Restitution. This was an agreement we've covered in many episodes of the story of, but it was between both sides that the Master, whose ashes were on Skaro, were agreed to be brought back to Gallifrey following his execution. But following the Master's resurrection, it broke the treaty between both sides, causing the friction between them to reach tipping point. Gallifrey was on the brink of war, with the last Great Time War edging ever closer. Within Gallifrey, there was then an anti-time crisis. 
This began when the 8th Doctor saved Charlie Pollard on the R1 or 1. And according to Romana, saving this woman wouldn't normally change the web of time. But on this occasion, it did. The Never Person, Centris, a Gallifreyan who was removed from the web and forced to live in the Antiverse, used this to break back into the universe, creating an anti-time incursion. This incursion stretched time to its limits, with the Matrix needing to be set to remember the correct path of history, with Vansel, a coordinator of the Celestial Time Agency, putting time back in place. Because of this, the CIA sent a number of battle TARDISes into the Vortex to try and find the Doctor and Charlie. They wanted to use Charlie as a route into the Antiverse. Vansel believed that Rassilon may be living within this universe and planned to bring him back. But this was all a ploy, however, with the Never People planning to detonate a bomb and force their way back through the barrier and into the normal universe. Luckily, the Doctor used his TARDIS to contain the explosion. Romana's presidency continued to be an eventful reign, battling through the free time movement and the return of Pandora, as well as the dogma virus outbreak. These were all documented within a huge array of Big Finish audio stories, which did involve Gallifrey, but for the length of this video, I won't delve into them. As I touched upon earlier, much of Romana's presidency was occupied with trying to avoid the inevitable conflict with the Daleks, as tensions between both sides continued to rise. It was in this period to which we believe the Time Lords tasked the Fourth Doctor to head back to Skaro and prevent the very creation of the Daleks, which of course he eventually refused. Both sides tried desperately to either prevent the war from ever happening by going back in time and changing pivotal moments. But the war couldn't be halted, and it eventually broke out, sending the universe into centuries of terror and darkness. <laughs> The Time War completely decimated all of time and all of space. And it is here in which I will direct you to another episode of the stories, where I documented the Time War in full. From its very early origins, back when it was all but a prophecy, all the way through to the final days. What is notable to mention in this video is that most of Gallifrey's greatest minds were resurrected to take part in the battle including the Master and Rassilon himself. But as the war took its toll on both sides, the Daleks gradually gained the edge, with the Gallifreyans on the brink of surrender. They sent memory lanterns into distant corners of the universe, trying desperately to keep the smallest remnants of Gallifrey alive. But Rassilon had different ideas, as he flat out refused to die. As the Time Lords were backed into their very own capital with the entire Dalek fleet descending, Rassilon concocted what he would deem the ultimate sanction. This was a plan to end all of time itself, with Time Lords living on as nothing but a consciousness. This plan was just as, if not more heinous than anything the Daleks had ever created, and this caused the Doctor to act. With no enemies on both sides, his people turned against him, there was no way the universe could live on if there was to be a winner. It was either a universe run by Daleks, or no universe at all. In the original timeline, the War Doctor stole the moment from the War Room and committed an act of genocide like no other. He activated the moment, taking the Daleks and the Time Lords down in one foul swoop trapping Gallifrey in the time lock forever. The Doctor was the only survivor, and he become the last of the Time Lords. Of course, this wasn't quite 
true. The master did escape the Time War too, and he eventually came back and used the four knocks in his head to connect with Gallifrey and whoever was remaining there. The master broke the time lock and almost brought back Gallifrey as well as Rassilon and his disciples. Rassilon still wanted to complete the plans that he had concocted within the war in them final days. But fortunately, as hell descended upon Earth, this was prevented by the Master who saved the Doctor's life, sending Rassilon and Gallifrey right back into the Time Lock. The decision that the Doctor made on the final day continued to plague him, however with the death of his people haunting his every waking moment. But following the discovery and the re-emergence of the War Doctor, the 10th and 11th Doctors broke their way back into the Time War and discovered that there was another way. They changed their mind and used the Stasis Cubes to bring all 13 Doctors together as they teamed up converging on Gallifrey freezing it within a single moment in time. This plan caused all the remaining Daleks in Gallifrey's orbit to destroy each other in their own crossfire, saving Gallifrey and all of its inhabitants. Gallifrey wasn't back, but it was safe, hidden and tucked away in a parallel pocket universe. Following the 11th Doctor's TARDIS being destroyed by the silence, a number of strange cracks began to appear in the fabric of reality, but it wasn't known where the cracks led and what was on the other side. That was until a strange message began to surface from the planet Trenzalar, with many species, including the Cybermen, the Daleks and many more, to converge. The Doctor broke into the planet to discover the source of this message, before uncovering that it was the Time Lords. The Time Lords needed the Doctor to say his name, confirming to them that this was the correct universe. But the Doctor knew that bringing Gallifrey through would kickstart a second Time War right above him. So he stayed to protect the planet, and maintain the stalemate. Once the Doctor though had protected the planet for as long as his final regeneration would allow him, the Time Lords opted to give the Doctor another 12 regenerations, closing the crack and sealing Gallifrey back into the parallel pocket universe. Or so we'd thought. The Doctor continued to try and find what he thought at this time was his home, with Missy once giving him what she thought were the correct coordinates. But upon heading to that very spot, the Doctor was enraged to find that Gallifrey was still lost. Sometime after, Gallifrey returned to the universe. It's not known if this was directly after the crack had been sealed, or if it was after it had been frozen in the parallel pocket universe. But at some point, Gallifrey was now at the extreme end of the time continuum for its own protection. The Time Lords had became scared that the fall of Gallifrey would come at the hands of the Hybrid, a Gallifreyan legend that prophesied a creature which would be a crossbreed between two warrior races and would eventually stand over the ruins of Gallifrey. Rassilon wanted to know more about this supposed creature, and he engineered a trap for the Doctor so he could find out the truth. Under his orders, the Doctor was tricked into wearing a teleport bracelet which would send him into his very own confession dial, where he would be tortured endlessly until he revealed the secrets of the hybrid. Instead of revealing what he knew though, the Doctor spent 4.5 billion years inside of the torture chamber before finally breaking free. The Doctor punched his way through the Asbantium before finally stepping foot on his home planet once again. Or like I said, what he thought was his home planet at the time. 
The Doctor was finally back on Gallifrey, and he quickly dethroned Rassilon, exiling him off of the planet. The Doctor was then placed in charge of Gallifrey once again, before he eventually left with Clara. This was the last we saw of Gallifrey, and we are to presume it remained in the same place, still technically under the Doctor's rule, until it was discovered beyond the boundary by the Master. Upon returning to his home, the Master discovered the secrets of the Timeless Child within the Matrix, and learning of Tektayun's discovery and the secrets kept by the Founding Fathers, the Master was horrified by what he'd uncovered. So he chose to obliterate the Citadel and all of the Time Lords within. All of the Time Lords' bodies were then implemented into the Cyber Warrior suits, creating a new race of Cyber Masters. It was these Cyber Masters which then stood over the ruins of Gallifrey, who were indeed a crossbreed between two warrior races being the Time Lords and the Cybermen. Maybe this was the hybrid that Rassilon was so scared of. In an attempt to stop the Cyber Masters, Koshamas detonated the Death Particle, seemingly wiping out Gallifrey completely, leaving it somehow in an even worse state than it already was. We are to believe that once again, all life on Gallifrey was destroyed, and it was left in ruin. Who knows when we will next see Gallifrey, and to what state we might find it in. It was already reduced to rubble, before being decimated further by the Death Particle. So God knows what might be left of it, if there is indeed anything left at all. You could argue Gallifrey has been through just as much, if not more terror, since the end of the Time War, more than it ever did beforehand. It's been trapped within a time lock, stuck at the end of time, before being blown up into a million pieces. It's suffered civil wars, constitutional crisis, multiple invasions and failed presidencies, as well as surviving through centuries of the last great time war. Its history has been filled full of drama, evolution and tragedy, and I'm sure it won't be too long before we see what happens next. Will it ever return to what was known as the Eons of Stability, to the peace and prosperity of its adolescent years? Who knows if that will be the case. But one thing is for sure, it can only get better from here. It's been through a lot in its billions of years of existence, and I hope I've been able to document the majority of it in this video. Lots of details are missing, and a lot of them from the comics and Big Finish have been skipped. But fitting 4.6 billion years of life into one video isn't easy, trust me. But that's all we know, and that's all we're going to cover for now. That concludes the incredible story of Gallifrey. So then guys, in a 30 minute nutshell, that is the story of Gallifrey, covering the crux and the most important pieces of its chronology. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video, and if you have, of course, hit that like button, as it does support this video and the channel, and do subscribe to the channel for much more episodes of the story of, as we hope to upload an episode like this every couple of weeks. So do subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell so you do not miss a notification, and of course, leave a comment in the section below what you thought of this video, what I may have missed, and of course, any suggestions on what you would like me to document next. You can stay updated on indeed what we are doing on the channel if you follow us across all of the social medias. You can also follow us on our public Discord and join in with all the chat. A link will be in the description of this video. You can also donate to the channel on Patreon as well if you would ever be so kind. But until next time, thank you so much for watching and listening to another episode of The Stories, and I will see you in the next one.